Hey guys, welcome back. This is the second video that we're going to be doing in person. So rotations and then dilations. So um, if you are meeting in person, then uh, this week we will be doing dilations. So no reason to do this assignment, uh, but I'm doing it for reference for people who want to look at it when they're at home or if they're doing distance learning. So anyway, this was a lot of fun to do in class. So I hope that uh, you guys enjoy this one. This is the one where we finally get to blow up puppies, which is really fun. So uh, quite controversial video yesterday and also today because uh, you're blowing up puppies and you're going to enjoy it. All right, so dilations are when we are enlarging or reducing a, an in image um, by some scale factor. So the word dilations, you probably know it best from like dilated pupils. So whenever it's really dark, your pupils are dilated. They are really large, which allows you to bring in a lot of light so that you can see better uh, in the dark. Constricted pupils would be like a reduction where it gets really, really small. So if you're outside, let's say on a sunny day at the beach, sounds nice, right? Then your pupils will be constricted, would be very, very small to uh, protect your eyes from being damaged by all the sunlight. So uh, also just gives you a small aperture size there. Uh, also, we can look at dilations with Mario. So when you start out the game Mario, you're uh, the small Mario, then whenever you run over the mushrooms, um, you he gets uh, dilated by a scale factor of two. It becomes twice as big, right? Tw twice as tall. And then as soon as he runs into a Goomba or he stubs his toe or whatever happens, he shrinks back down to his original size, which would be a reduction. So this is uh, simply dilations. So the rules for dilations is we take whatever values we have for X and Y, and we multiply it by K. So it's KX times KY, where K is some scale factor so for instance, if k is equal to 2, we're multiplying it, our point by the scale factor of 2. So if we have the point where we're going to start out, which is at 3, 1, which is the point here, a is at 3, 1, and we multiply it by a scale factor of 2, it's now going to become the point 6 and 2. So if we graph it out, 6 and 2, it's a point right here. So it's going to be A prime, the image of the dilation. And this is a dilation centered about the origin here. And you also notice that you can draw a line that's going to go through the pre-image and the image of the dilation. So it's going to go uh, twice as far away from the origin as the original point A is here. All right, so if, it, if the K or the scale factor is larger than 2, then it's called an enlargement because it's going to get bigger. So if we take our triangle ABC here and we want to enlarge it by a scale factor of 2, uh, let's go ahead and move all three vertices. So the point 2, 3 is going to become just multiplying by 2, right? So 2 times 2 is 4, and 3 times 2 is 6. So 4 and 6. 3, 1 turns into 6 and 2, and then 1, 2 turns into 2 and 4. If we graph those points, which I've already done here, the point uh, 2, 3 turned into the point 4, and 6 so this would be our uh, a prime the point 1 and 2 turned into the point uh, here sorry which would be 2 and 4 and then b 3 and 1 turned into 6 and 2 so that would be our b prime so um, also notice that you can draw the lines connecting these going back to the origin uh, our triangle here is going to be twice as far away from the origin as the triangle abc was its perimeter will be twice as uh, twice as long, but its area will be uh, four times as big because of the difference in the dimensions, which we're going to talk about that like in the 12th unit, pretty much one of the last things we do. But anyway, um, I'll, I'll show it to you a little bit better on the next one. So the next thing we have is a reduction. So anytime that we have a scale factor that's less than one, it's considered to be a reduction, meaning it's going to be shrinking. So instead of blowing it up, we're going to be shrinking it down. So if we take our uh, square here, square ABCD, and we multiply every, every point by the point by scale factor of one half. So negative six, negative two is going to turn into negative three, negative one, which is this point right here. Um, negative four, negative two is going to be negative two, negative one. So that would turn to that point right there. Negative four, negative four is negative two, negative two, which would be this point right here. And then negative six, negative four is going to be negative three, negative two, which would be this point. Of course, you can probably guess by now right there. Now, if we connect all the points here, uh, you'll see that there is our, our reduction. One thing that I did need to point out here uh, is that whenever we move the points, well, I guess you kind of already knew that from the last video, but whenever we move our points, it's not just the vertices that are being moved. We plot the vertices because that's the easiest way to see everything move. But remember the vertices, uh, the the square, for instance, is made up of all the collinear points that exist in between those vertices. And all those points are going to be reduced by a scale factor of one half as well. So that's going to make up all the points across here and going down here as well. So keep that in mind. You're not just moving the vertices, you're actually moving all the points that are collinear in between those vertices. 
Okay, the other thing that I wanted to point out to you is that um, it is a reduction of one half, and so the perimeter is half the size as the original, but the area is a fourth in this case. And you might be able to see that if I move the square here. Clearly, it is exactly uh, one fourth. Hmm. Kind of cool because the height is going to be twice as big and the base is twice as big. So two times two would be four times as big, essentially what's going on there. All right, so properties of dilations, they always go back from some center of dilation. That'll always be the origin for us and we'll be working on a Cartesian plane just like we did with the rotations. Um, if we go from triangle ABC and we say DEF is the image of it, we should technically be using the points ABC and then ABC prime, but just kind of roll with it here. So if we go from this point, uh, this leg here of four to the corresponding length here of eight, what would the scale factor be? What's the, what are we multiplying by to go from four to eight or multiplying it by two, meaning technically it's twice as far away from the origin, even though it doesn't really look like it. They didn't draw it very well, but that's okay. I guess it's just, this is vanishing or something. I don't know what's going on. Uh, so that means that K is equal to two in this case. Now, if you wanted to know when it's easy numbers like this, it's pretty simple to figure out what the scale factor is. But if it's more tricky values, then you're going to want to use this formula here. So we can find the scale factor K by taking some, um, some corresponding dimension or point from the image divided by the corresponding point from the pre-image. So for instance, the image had a, the, uh, a length of eight and the corresponding length on the pre-image was four, which is the before. So it's the after divided by the before, which we reduce down to two over one, which is just two. Now, if I was going backwards, say let's go in from 16 to eight, then whenever we do this formula, so the image where we're ending up, which is eight divided by the pre-image of 16, is going to reduce down to one half. So then our scale factor K would be equal to one half because we're reducing it by uh, one half instead of multiplying it by two. So it's the reciprocal in other words. Okay, so pretty much that's what I got to show you on that. Um, what's really fun about this is that we actually kind of cross over to art just a little bit. So you can imagine your origin being here and then you have your X and your Y axes. Let's see if I can draw those real quick with the drawing straight lines, just a little bit of help here. Okay, so imagine your x axis here and your y axis here. Of course, I'll move it over. So over here we have our x, and over here we have our y axis. And then all these points here, this rectangle that we have here, this surface is all going to be reduced going back to the origin, uh, tracing back to the origin to this image of the reduction here. And then you see all the points that are also tracing back going there. So if you can imagine whatever you have for the front face, uh, the, the second face is just being reduced back by some scale factor, some value K, some reduction. Maybe that is, I don't know, five, six or something like that. Um, and so if you actually plotted this on some Cartesian plane where you had all the points, you can move the points going back there, which is kind of the inspiration to the problems that I put on the homework, which are really, really cool. So if you enjoy art and one point and two point perspective, uh, you'll enjoy the assignment that we're going to do today. Here's another example. Um, you've got your vanishing point here. You can imagine having uh, your X and your Y axes going here. So all the points that we have here are being reduced back to the origin here. And notice all the lines um, are all tracing back to that as well. Here's two point perspective, kind of the same thing going on, but we would have two origins and two axes uh, for everything that's down the middle to the right goes that one. Everything else goes to the left one over there. Even whenever we're drawing something inside a house, uh, even though you can't see the vanishing point, it still exists, right? So even the picture frame, the door, uh, the door frame, the furniture itself, the coffee table, the uh, entertainment center, whatever this is over here, all of those all go back to some vanishing point. Even the points that are in another room, uh, like the lines on the walls and stuff, all of those are going back to that single vanishing point, which is kind of cool. All right, um, then, so that's it. Um, nine minutes, that was pretty fast. Uh, let's go ahead and get started on the assignment. So if you're in person, I'll actually give you these worksheets so that you can just take a photo of them. You don't have to do it on the iPad. But if you're learning from home, I'll attach it to the assignment. So number one, we want to dilate the triangle by a scale factor of two and three. So I'm going to multiply it by three first. Uh, so I'm going to take all three of my points, A, B, and C, and multiply all of their coordinates by the scale factor of three. So three, three turns into point nine, nine, which is going to be this point uh, right up here. I'm pretty sure I put it somewhere up here. Um, there it is. Okay, so that's a prime, which is nine and nine. And then the point uh, two ones times three and times three is going to be six and two. So six and two, which goes to right here. 
somewhere. Okay, so b prime is going to be 6 and 3. Yeah, that's right. And then 4, 1 is going to be 12 and uh, 3. So 12 and 3, which is this point right over here. So then we can draw our triangle by connecting the dots. I use a ruler if you are really OCD like I am. And so this triangle is going to be have a perimeter that's three times as big as the original one and an area that's going to be nine times as big because the base is three times as big as this one. See, that one's a length of two. This time's two, four, six, okay? And the height is going to be uh, six as well where this one was a height of two. So it's got three times the, the base, three times the height, meaning the area is going to be nine times as big, which is kind of cool. Just three squared if you're wondering. Uh, and then same thing with the perimeter, except it's going to be twice the value because that's a one dimensional uh, unit. Now, if we want to multiply by a scale factor of two, that three and three is going to be turn is going to turn into six and six, uh, which would be this point right up here. So I can go ahead and uh, draw a little point there because I don't think I made them. And then four and two, so four and two, which would be this point right here. And then uh, eight and four, or eight and two, which is this point here. Notice that all of our points are going to be along our our, our lines, our vanishing points that are all regressing back to the origin here, which is kind of cool. Uh, then we can go ahead and draw the lines here to give us our triangle. So triangle by a scale factor of two and multiply by a scale factor of three. If I did ask the question, where are we going from? If we go from uh, from this one, the A prime to the A, we'll call this the A double prime. So we could take, if we want to find the scale factor, k is equal to the image divided by the pre-image. Um, try that again. So k is equal to the image divided by the pre-image. So the image point is 9, 9. Uh, sorry, uh, here, which would be 6 and 6. So 6 and 6. And then the pre-image was 9, 9. So we could take one of those coordinates of 6 divided by 9, which would reduce down to 2 thirds. So our scale factor here is k is equal to 2 thirds. See how that's helpful? Kind of cool. Also, you notice the two and the thirds there. Heh, <laughs> fun. All right, also if I wanted to go the other way, point here is going to be the point eight and two. So I can do my formula again. K is equal to the image divided by the pre-image. The image is going to be 12. The pre-image is eight. And so whenever I reduce that, that's going to be uh, three halves. So three over two. <laughs> that was kind of interesting drawing there. All right, moving on. Just some extra stuff. Now we're gonna uh, blow up the man by a scale factor of two. I mean, dilate the man. <laughs> Poor guy. He's only got one arm and we're about to blow him up. Oh, this is fun. Okay, so we're just gonna plot some points like the top of his head right here is at four and four. If we multiply by a scale factor of two, the top of his head is now gonna be at the point uh, eight and eight. Uh, the bottom of his head is, or his chin or whatever, is at four and two. So that's gonna be now um, at eight and four. And then you can probably imagine the center of his head here, his righty ear, his left ear. And then we're going to try to draw a circle. I'm probably going to cheat because it's really difficult to draw circles with um, my digital writing tablet. I'm not that good with it. All right, so I cheated. So there's his head. And then we want to plot some other points like his shoulder here. That's at 5, 2, which is going to be 10, 4, rubber ducky. Uh, same thing you can imagine down there. The right hip here, 5, 0, is going to be 10, 0. Okay, so we can draw his body. Girl, look at that body. I work out. You guys don't even know the song. It's okay. All right, then we want to draw the end of his hand, which is at 6, 0, which is going to be 12, 0 over here. Uh, his armpit, which is at 5, 1, which would be 10, 2. And then you can probably kind of figure out where those go. Just connect your dots. Fun. And then his right foot, which is at 5, negative 2, is going to be 10, negative 4 which goes all the way down here. So then we can draw his legs. So that goes there, this goes here, draw it over, and split down the middle between two legs. Okay, cool. Uh, so there he is, that's our guy. We blew him up by a scale factor of two. You're gonna do the same thing with the puppy. Uh, so you're gonna blow up the puppy. <laughs> I know, you're gonna enjoy it. It's okay, no one's watching. Uh, it is actually kind of fun to blow up the shape art here, uh, except you're gonna do a comp composition I should I did it in class like talked you through it but I didn't load it here but what you want to, what I want you to do is to multiply all the points by two and then shift it to the right four um, and so that will be how you do it so whatever you do whenever you double it so let's say his head was here then we're gonna move it over one two three four or just add four to the component so this point would be right over here then his head would be here so if we were shifting it over all right fine I'll try drawing one that would be what it would look like if we multiply by scale factor of two. Then at the end, we shifted it over to the right four. Okay, so hopefully you can figure out how to do that for the puppy.
All right, dilation center at zero, zero. Find the image of each point given uh, each scale factor. So the scale factor is three and D is the pre-image is gonna be seven and two. So we wanna multiply the coordinates by three. So that's gonna give us what, 21 and six. And then same thing here, except this is a reduction. We're dividing it by four or multiplying it by one fourth. So it's gonna be negative three fourths over, uh, or negative three fourths comma, and then five fourths. So it's gonna be two fractions here for the image of the dilation or the reduction in this case is a special kind of dilation uh, for our prime. All right, number 14, uh, we're gonna take these houses, the one on the left here, we're gonna dilate it or, or reduce it by a scale factor of one half. So take all the points that we want. So I'm gonna plot this first point right up here and I'm gonna multiply 16 and six by a scale factor of one half. So that's gonna be eight and uh, three. So that's gonna be this point right here. Then I can move this point here, which is at negative 12 and two, that's gonna become negative six and one. And then negative 18 and two is gonna be negative nine and one. And then we can connect the dots there. I think I've already done it. So there's the, the top of our roof here. You can also notice that it's tracing back to the origin, which is, ooh, fancy. I guess those are the ones tracing back to the origin. And then next thing we can do is plot uh, the other points on the bottom, which we can kind of already see where it's gonna go because of those, but negative 12 and negative four, which is negative six and two. And then of course this one would have to go over there. You can fill in the rest of it pretty simply just by looking at it. Uh, and then you can probably figure out, okay, the windows go there and the door goes on the bottom there. The next thing is that you can connect the dots going from here to here. Um, and that would basically make the sides of your, of your house, kind of like what I did over here. So on this one, we want to multiply it by a scale factor of two thirds and I believe one third. So two thirds I've actually already done here. You can see it here. That's going to be the other building. And then if I did one third, uh, 15 and six is going to divide by three is going to be five and three or two, of course, that point. 18 and three is going to be the point six and um, one and a half, which would be this point right here, I believe. No. 16 and one, yeah, okay. And then, so the other point, of course, would be on this side here, and then we've got this point here and this point here, and then you can connect your lines here. And this would be the second one. And then you could put your window right here, and then the door on the very bottom. Okay, now if I wanted to do a scale factor of one six as well, you could just basically cut this these points in half again. So five and two, which is going to be two and a half and one. You can probably see where the other points are gonna end up just by looking at our uh, guidelines there or the vanishing points, whatever you call them. And then you can draw your window and the door. And then if we connect these two together, you'll see the second house there, even though it's technically the stuff in the back you wouldn't actually see. So we've got our house over here, we got this house and we got this house as well. And then the next question would be, which one is the longest house? So it's a good question. How does that work with the distance and the distance that you see? Uh, maybe this one be the longest or maybe this one because it takes up half of the area, half of the length. I don't really know. How does that work? Food for thought. All right, number 17. Uh, they give us QR, which is this triangle in the middle, QRS, and then QRS prime, which is gonna be the enlargement. QR is 10, QR prime is 12. So we're going from 10 to 12. What's our ratio? So to write the ratio, we just go in the same order. So 10 to 12, and when we reduce that, it's gonna to reduce to five to six. To find the scale factor, we take the image divided by the pre-image, which is 12 divided by 10, which will reduce to the fraction of six divided by five, or six fifths. So if we wanted to solve, let's say that RS was 12. So RS here is 12. We wanna know what RS prime is. We wanna know, basically, in other words, if 10 goes to 12, then what does 12 go to? This is like setting up a, um, a proportion, which we'll be doing when we do similarity, which would be what we um, would do second semester, but it's pretty simple here. You could multiply the point 12 times uh, six fifths, our scale factor, and that would tell you how to do it, because if we do 10 times six fifths, it goes to 12. 12 times six fifths will go to 14.4, spoilers. Or you can set up a proportion, which is how I wanna solve it. So 10 goes to 12, just as 12. So 10 goes to 12, just as 12 goes to X. And then the way that we would solve is by cross multiplying. So 12 times 12 divided by 10. 
So we have 144 is equal to 10x. When we divide that by 10, we divide both sides by 10, which will give you x is equal to 14.4. So that's going to be our answer for RS is 14.4. So 10 goes to 12, just as 12 goes to 14.4. And that's it, just over 21 minutes, or about, about 21 minutes. So not too bad. I will um, see you guys next week. We'll be taking the test over transformations in person. So the next assignments that you have for you, whether it's on Thursday and Friday or you do it on Monday, Tuesday, depending if you're an A and B student, will be uh, over symmetry, which will be really, really easy. That'll be uh, assignment 4-5, and then you'll take the practice test at home as well. So I uh, hope you enjoy the symmetry one. That one's quite a fun one. I'm enjoying, I'm looking forward to doing it as well. I wish we could do it in person, but you know, we can't do all of them in person, but we'll try to do the fun ones in person. All right, see you guys. Have a good day.